Hello and welcome to today's webinar. We are very excited to have you here with us back in MTS's virtual studios leading up to the Mountain Travel Symposium event. I'm Kat Shaw, the Director of Marketing and Content for MTS, and today's webinar is brought to you by our partners, Berkeley. Before we get started and I introduce our wonderful presenters, I just want to go over a few housekeeping notes for how we're going to spend the next hour together. So you'll notice that the webinar has Q&A and chat features. Please submit any questions that you have via the Q&A function. Submit those questions whenever you have them, and we will be reserving our Q&A session for the end of the webinar, but you're allowed to submit those questions at any time. And the chat feature is to be used to communicate with other attendees, to respond to any comments, um, but please make sure that you put your questions for the panelists in the chat. The webinar is being recorded, so it will be available for viewing post webinar, so you can send that on to any colleagues that may have missed the webinar. And all of the registered attendees will get a link via email tomorrow. So with that, I'd like to introduce Rob Perlman, the President and Chief Operating Officer of Steamboat Ski Resort Incorporation, and Warren Wilkinson, the Vice President, Growth, Travel and Tourism for Barclay. Warren and Rob, feel free to turn your cameras on and your microphones on, and I am going to pass it off to you to get started. All righty. Oh, hold on one second here, folks. All right, why are we not seeing this here? Warren, I'm seeing that you're sharing your screen, but it doesn't seem to have- Yeah, there we go, how's that? As well. There we go, all set. Sorry about that, folks. Careful. You know, you practice and, and it doesn't necessarily mean anything at showtime, right? Technical difficulties. Well, good morning. Uh, it's, it's great to be with you here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with Rob. Uh, greetings from a cloudy Kansas City and a snowy Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Uh, I am the uh, vice president and I lead our travel and tourism practice at Barclay. We're an independent creative idea company. I want to thank Mountain Travel Symposium for inviting, uh, inviting Rob and I today to talk to you about um, how to protect, preserve, and repair the mountain resort ecosystem in a post-COVID world. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the impact. You know, the, the sudden and drastic drop in visitation has had a dramatic impact on the mountain resort ecosystem. The obvious impacts of restaurants and, and bar closures as well as business being shuttered were experienced nearly everywhere. This was coupled with significant job losses across the hospitality industry, as well as in every corner of the economy. No portion of the mountain resort ecosystem was spared. Rob, um, you know, let's just jump into this. Can you share some thoughts on how the pandemic impacted Steamboat? and the whole Yampa Valley. And then specifically, can you share Steamboat's early actions and then as the winner and your response progressed? Well, thanks Warren and good morning, good afternoon to those on the East Coast um, from snowy Steamboat. Uh, excited to be here and uh, thanks Warren for inviting me and uh, Cat and Mountain Travel Symposium. Uh, excited to be here and talk a little bit about, you know, where we are a year later. And we just passed uh, the one year anniversary of the abrupt shutdown, as you spoke about, Warren, in terms of the impact. And it was abrupt. Um, that decision was made very quickly uh, based on all the information we had at the time. Uh, and it was a, a global pandemic. So uh, 
the abruptness definitely impacted us. Um, and we closed on a Saturday and didn't operate on a Sunday. Uh, and our goal was to uh, close the resort and um, really protect our staff and our community and our guests. And we focused on getting um, the resort wound down as quickly as possible. Um, and our focus was to get the seasonal uh, folks that didn't live here on a year round basis home to wherever that was. Uh, so that was a big focus of ours. Um, and we tried to do that as quickly as possible. You know, our employee housing uh, that we have um, here locally, uh, our occupancy at the employee housing was above 90% in mid-March last year. And that's a scary thought when we're facing, you know, the coronavirus and how it spreads. And uh, we have a bunch of people living in close quarters. Um, so we really tried to reduce that occupancy as quickly as possible uh, and, and send folks to home wherever that was. So that was a real big focus of ours in terms of, you know, how we uh, addressed it immediately. Uh, obviously, I was on the phone with our local leaders in terms of the lodging association, the local hospital, public health, um, the county, the city, you know, to go back to the ecosystem. Um, as we're all facing this daunting uh, pandemic and communication was key, uh, so we really focused on trying to communicate to our staff and, and to our guests as, and to our community as, as much as possible during those early, early days of the pandemic. So um, how did the rest of the community react? So you, you know, as, the, as the largest employer in the Valley and, and, and obviously the, the, the lead business for the Yampa Valley, particularly as it relates to a ski resort destination, how did the rest of the community react? And how did the ski corp, ski and resort corp partner with the Chamber Resort Association and the Chamber of Commerce? How did you work together um, to, you know, to, to help the entire community, but, you know, the visitor and resident facing businesses? Well, you know, uh, it's similar in all mountain communities where the resort is obviously a big player uh, and works very closely with the rest of the community. Um, but as a ski resort and as operators of a ski area, we're used to the crisis du jour. Not to say we have dealt with a pandemic previously, but we deal with low snow, we deal with too much snow, we deal with you know travel disruptions. We're constantly adapting uh, to what's going on in our environment and the marketplace and in the community. Um, so we get into response mode and, and that's kind of, I think where we operate fairly well uh, and step up as a leader in terms of you know, let's take some action, let's have some communication, let's be proactive um, and start thinking about, you know, how this is going to play out for the summer. And, you know, we had to deal with the airlines, which I know we'll get into a little bit later in terms of the air program and talking to the airlines and saying, you know, we need to uh, quickly stop getting people to come into this community from all destinations around the world and wind down the air program three weeks earlier than than had been predicted or or scheduled. So we really stepped up and again uh, rallied a group uh, with the chamber and the hospital and the county and the city and public health. And we were on the phone uh, several times a week. Um, and at the same time I was having those discussions. I was actually on a call every day with my counterparts across the Altera Mountain family uh, uh, of resorts. And that was, you know, 14 resorts spread across North America into Canada um, and uh, covering uh, the West Coast to the East Coast and, and the Rockies in between. So we're all communicating and just trying to stay focused in what we can control and what we know. And, and as everybody experienced, uh, information was coming out uh, fast and, and uh, furious uh, and changing almost by the day. So we were just adapting and, and doing the best we could. Fantastic, thanks. So now let's look forward, but before we talk about destination brands, let's talk about brands in general. So right now I want everybody that's uh, on the webinar, scratch everything you know about one word, brand. 
Forget it about it for just a few minutes. Forget about it. And, and I know that's hard for marketing and communication professionals because it's in our DNA, but let's try. So what do we know about brand? What do we think we know about brand? Well, it's a logo, it's advertising, it's marketing, it's branding. We all know it's an investment and our CEOs know that as well. It's something you can turn up or down and it can be an asset, an asset that we can protect. Again, forget all of that, just cross it out. I think this quote from Jeff Bezos really sums it up nicely. A brand is what people say about you when you're out of the room. And I want you to think about that. So let's go deeper into brand. The sum of every experience a person has with a company, organization, or personality. Let me say that again, the sum of every experience. So how can you control that? How can you maintain consistency? How can you manage that level of interaction? Sounds impossible. So let's take a quick look under the hood of the whole brand spectrum. From inside to outside, we can evaluate almost every aspect of a brand. Your culture, your products and services, that experience we mentioned earlier, what content you share, your earned and paid public relations, all the way to the ads people see to attract them to your destination. That's your whole brand. Are they all present? Are they all working together? Think a true whole brand is impossible? So what is a whole brand? You'll hear that term used a lot. And while we may not own the phrase, at Barclay we have mastered how to build them, how to rate them, and how to make them better, even more whole. As this slide states, when something works as a system, together it, involves, it evolves into a whole brand. The stronger and more creative the ideas, the stronger the brand operating system and whole brand becomes. Think about your own brand right now. Does everything work together as a system? It does? Great. Now, where's the breakdown? Where do you have room for growth? Destinations are brands and leveraging whole brand thinking can build more valuable and appealing destinations. But it means thinking differently about your destination brand. Uber and Airbnb are great brands, but they don't own the cars or homes that make up their networks. They have network power. Southwest Airlines is an incredibly powerful whole brand. They own or control all their assets. They have asset power. Mountain resort destinations don't own all their assets, but they have a different kind of power. The modern traveler sees it differently. Every time they come into contact or experience a part of your destination, they see it as a part of your destination brand. From the airport arrival experience to hotel check-in, the lift operators, ski instructors, restaurant, shuttle bus drivers, it's all part of the destination brand. When considering mountain resort communities, we believe resort operators and their DMOs or resort associations need to collaborate and operate as the brand steward of their destination and apply creativity across the whole brand spectrum and across the entire community. Rob, now let's, let's think about Steamboat for a while. Can you share your thoughts on the singular brand experience of Steamboat as a destination and how the ski resort and the community work together to function as a singular brand? And can you talk about how Steamboat integrates and develops the interdependent relationship between employee culture and the brand, what we call brand culture? And we've talked about this before, Rob, because employees are such a viable, a vital part of what a destination brand is. Yes. Um, and we take a, a, a similar approach with that whole brand as the destination uh, here in Steamboat. Um, and as you talked about, we don't differentiate where somebody lands at the airport 22 miles away at the Yampa Valley Regional Airport, and they walk off the air stairs and walk onto the tarmac out there in Hayden, and that's 22 miles away. And then that's their first experience. I mean, it starts before that, but that's their first experience here. 
and they don't differentiate where that starts and the, and ends, and then they get into the city of Steamboat Springs, and then they don't differentiate where that ends and where they get on to the resort. And when they get to the top of the resort, they don't differentiate between the top of the mountain or the airport 22 miles away. And it's all a whole brand experience. And we work very hard with not only uh, the resort here, but with our community to tell uh, all of our citizens and community that yeah, people when they choose a vacation destination, they don't say, oh, I'm gonna go to the city of Steamboat Springs, which is different than the resort, which is different than the airport. Um, it's all, a whole brand and a whole destination. Uh, and, and thankfully, we preach that and talk about that. Um, and the brand pillars that we have here at the resort are, are integrated into the community. We talk about champagne powder snow. Yes, it is trademarked. It's unique to, to this location, but it's you know what differentiates us. And one of our old ranching uh, ranchers back in the 60s coined the phrase champagne powder snow before the resort was even founded because they were skiing on the mountain where we're currently located. And as they got to the bottom, they said, this snow is so light and so dry, it billows up and tickles your nose like champagne. And hence the, the term champagne powder uh, snow was, was coined and trademarked uh, from that point going forward. We also talk about our Western hospitality and our ranching heritage. That's a brand pillar and it extends from the top of the mountain all the way through this, this entire Yampa Valley. Um, we talk about family friendly and we're set up uh, for families and for them to have a great experience here. And we also talk about our Olympic heritage and that, that goes throughout our entire community as Hallison Hill is the longest continuously run ski area in the United States and it was founded in 1905 and is still owned and managed and run by the city of Steamboat Springs. So these are our brand pillars and it's not just the resort brand pillars, but it's the community. And it's really what creates that whole brand that you were talking about. And to your second question about employees and the culture, um, it, it's not just our employees, but it's really the community. And we talk about it, and I think you're familiar with it, Warren, but we talk about the Yampa Valley curse. And it's a <laughs> legendary curse uh, where they say, if you come and live here and work here and uh, experience all that the Yampa Valley has to offer, both in the winter as well as in the summer, that there's a curse. And if you go away, and there's always something that will draw you back to this, this special place. So. And I think that's part of our DNA and, and you spoke about it and that, that helps create this whole brand. Um, so once you come here and experience it, uh, you're forever cursed. And I think that's a good way uh, about uh, your desire to wanna make it back here to vacation or eventually to retire or, or to work. So we're fortunate that the Yampa Valley curse is alive and well. I am a test. I'm a testament to that Yampa Valley curse, Rob. I've been back so many times after nine years living in the, in the valley, just a magical place. But once you're there, you have to come back. So, you're you're so you're so right. Uh, let's continue. Um, this is a great quote uh, from Maura Gass. I wish I could take credit for it, but Maura Gass, the executive director of Visit Irving, um, coined this several years ago. You know, if you build a place where people want to visit, you'll build a place where people want to live. And if you build a place where people want to live you'll build a place where people want to work. We live in an interdependent economy. You know, tourism is an essential part of an interdependent economy. Can you share, Rob, how Steamboat Ski Resort addresses destination brand manager as it relates to talent attraction since the entire mountain destination experience is so dependent on a positive and engaged workforce? Yes, absolutely. And I talked about one of our brand pillars is our Western hospitality. It's, you know, the tip of the hat, the handshake is your word. Um, those are all ingrained in our community and with our culture and with our employees. And we started a program several years ago um, to build on our success as being, you know, one of the most hospitable um, uh, resorts out there. Um, and that's called service excellence. And it was really directed at our guests and how we can 
you know, even do a greater job at, at deliberately um, helping our guests experience Steamboat and, and exceeding their expectations uh, with every interaction. And, and so we rolled out that program. It was successful for a year. And then the more we thought about that, we said that really needs to apply internally as well. So we need to provide that same guest service approach, service excellence approach to exceed our employees' expectations on our interactions with each other uh, at every possible moment. So it's super important that we have an engaged workforce and, and they understand that they're here to have a great experience while they're here, um, to grow and to flourish. And, and we talk about um, one of our strategies is to grow our people, to allow them to be them their, their best selves and, and provide them opportunities uh, to continue to, to work in a special place. So it's super important to have that fabric of the employee culture to create that brand. And if you can do that, it's going to carry over to the guest experience as well. Uh, and we also talk about one of our, our five values is fun. Um, we're here to have fun. Um, we're here to perform and, and do a good job, but it's very important that we all understand a, a big driver of why, why we are here. Um, it's to, to live in a special place. It's to have fun. It's to be in the mountains. Um, and and that, that needs to be a part of our culture and it needs to, um, be expressed to our guests and everybody that comes here that we're about having fun. Um, so it's, uh, it's like wi winning inside to win outside. Yes. Yes, exactly. So Rob Steamboat Springs is rooted, you know, the community is rooted in ranching, which continues today as well as a, uh, you know, it's a world-class resort destination. How does the, ski resort and the community work together preserve, to preserve and protect the community's brand and the special nature of the Yampa Valley. Can you share your approach uh, on purpose and sustainability and how do you communicate those, uh, those efforts and successes? Uh, great question. Um, you know, we've been around since 1963. As I said, skiing has been around long before that in 1905. Uh, Hallison Hill was founded, so um, it's been a part of our DNA in terms of skiing, ranching. Um, uh, this values of uh, heritage is around the ranching. Uh, there's still working ranches today, many, many of those. Um, we live in a majestic valley with the Yampa River running through it. So uh, a couple things. One is uh, Hazy Werner was the matriarch uh, of this place and uh, you know, had kids uh, that went on to the Olympics and uh, is a big part of who we are. And uh, she would open her doors and invite people in. And, um, uh, you know, uh, she was a rancher and, and grew up uh, here locally and, and continued to, to be a big part of who we are. And, and that goes back to our agricultural and ranching heritage, which is a huge part of uh, what, what makes us so special. Uh, so we, as the brand stewards, need to carry that on uh, forever, um, and, and we will, um, despite having multiple owners, despite having, you know, um, challenges we face, we always go back to kind of who we are, which is a part of this uh, ranching community and heritage. Um, uh, so we're very supportive. Uh, each and every year we give uh, approximately 1.5 million to the local nonprofits. We're very involved in the Yampa Valley Community Foundation. And we don't do a lot of bragging about it. We're, we're, we're actually kind of quiet and humble about all the contributions we do to continue to give back to this community because um, it's the right thing to do. And, and that's a huge part of who we are. Um, but uh, several years ago, uh, uh, we were talking about, you know, how can we uh, turn up the volume on our efforts to protect the environment, um, uh, to work on sustainability, uh, to be more engaged with our community, to help lead the community when it comes to uh, sustainability efforts. Um, a big part of Northwest Colorado is that the other big businesses is the coal uh, producing plants that we have in Craig and in Hayden. 
and we we saw that those were you know not going to be forever. Um, and in fact, uh, XL Energy uh, advanced their timeline at decommissioning those power plants, and those will go away here and be decommissioned in 27 and 28. So that's going to be very quickly. I think that's a good thing for the environment, and we need to work on as a community how we're going to continue to have good jobs and be a part of this community and the resort's going to play a role there. Um, so we actually um, put our money where our mouth is and hired a director of sustainability and community engagement two years ago. And we went out there and found um, uh, Sarah Jones who worked here locally. She was executive director of the Yampa Valley Sustainability Council for 10 years and really helped us kind of establish our footprint in a, in a bigger way. And we said we wanted to turn up the volume on those efforts. And since then, we actually uh, made a commitment to the Yampa River, uh, which is, as you know, runs through the heart of our valley and is the lifeblood of not only the resort and the community and the uh, attractions and fly fishing, but it's also the lifeblood of our ranching heritage. And we made the biggest cash commitment uh, to any organization where we uh, pledged a half a million dollars over five years and it was matched um, by another half a million dollars so in effect a million dollars to the Yampa River Fund to preserve and protect uh, this uh, precious asset that we have here uh, in the valley and there's other organizations like uh, uh, the Agriculture Alliance, the Ag Alliance uh, that we're members of and support um, uh, that just uh, you know continue to uh, be a part of the fabric that differentiates us from other mountain destinations. I mean, at the end of the day, we all have uh, white snow, green trees, and blue skies, but there's a few things that differentiate us uh, from the competition, and our ranching heritage uh, is a big part of that. So, impressive, impressive efforts, and and I'm sure the employees, particularly you know the the, the younger employees, really um, appreciate all of that work because you know modern consumers today they expect more out of their employer and it's obvious that steamboats doing a lot of the right things to to take care of to steward the the yampa valley but also to to be a to operate as a whole brand it's all a part of going back to the whole brand absolutely and you know i think we're making progress and we like the rest of the world have have a ways to go so so let's, let's get it. Today, lodging is an integral and critical part of the mountain resort experience. Some mountain resort destinations control a large percentage of overnight accommodations, but most do not and are populated by individually owned condominiums and hotel properties, each of which deliver their own brand of hospitality. Can you share how the lodging community, the Steamboat Resort Association, collaborate to deliver on the destination brand experience you're trying to deliver? I know that you, you guys operate um, the uh, Steamboat Grand, but how do you work with the rest of the lodging community? Well, they're a, a critical partner to our success uh, on a year round basis, not just in the winter, but in the shoulder seasons and in the summer. Um, so we're active participants in the Steamboat Springs Lodging Association. Um, uh, it's a very powerful group that's made up of uh, organizations like Vacasa or the resort group, which are the bigger players, but it goes down to the small property management companies um, that don't have that many. And our goal with, with that organization where a big our participant is to be engaged and to communicate and share and, and talk about challenges and opportunities and air program and, you know, need periods and peak periods and so it's a constant communication um, and it's run through the lodging association is actually run through the chamber. It's a part of the chamber. So we have the entire backing of the business community that supports the lodging association. Um, and I think there's a good understanding that how important the lodging community and association and the partners are to our success as a destination and as a whole brand. Um, and that's for a couple different reasons. And I'll go back to, you know, the start of the pandemic last mid-March where 
We made the decision to close the resort as abruptly as we did. And we knew there would be consequences and refunds and rebookings and credits. And we quickly galvanized the lodging community and said, we're going to do this. We're going to do this very quickly. And we need your support. We all need to be flexible because if we go into this and say, we're not going to offer refunds or, or do anything like that, it's going to hurt our brand for the long term. So we said, there might be some short term pain, but this is about making sure we preserve, protect, and even strengthen our relationships with the people that come here and want a vacation here. And thankfully, our, our lodging community really um, understood and supported that concept. Um, our central reservations office, which we manage, which books uh, the entire community, you know, they were working around the clock to answer questions, to rebook, to provide credits, to provide refunds, along with the rest of the lodging community. And that was a real test for us, not only as a resort, but as a community to preserve, protect, and I would, I would argue strengthen uh, our, our brand as a destination. It goes back to that whole brand concept we, we continually talk about. The other com important component of our lodging community is they charge a 2% accommodations tax that goes to support the air program. So uh, that's the local marketing district. And as you know, our air program is critical to our success as a destination because we have six airlines that fly into the Ampa Valley Regional Airport. We're a destination resort with 70 to 80% of our guests coming from uh, you know outside the region, so part of you know their the lodging associations contributes to the local marketing district. They pay for two thirds of the cost of the air program, with the resort contributing the other third. So again, another way we partner not only on lodging and as a destination, but on our air program as you know a, a single uh, whole brand uh, here in. Northwest Colorado. What a segue. Uh, oh. You know, I, I, it's so funny. You know, I think when I when I worked at Steamboat, one of the things I was involved in was operating charters out at Hayden in the early days of Steamboat to get enough landings at Hayden so that we could access federal grant dollars to extend the runway to get larger aircraft to come to Steamboat. And now you have a veritable Air Force out at Hayden with the air service that you have. So, you know, mountain resort destinations can leverage their network power of their community to help drive economic development. And uh, to the community they serve, driving business growth and commercial real estate development and prices. As the economic vitality of destination improves, so does residential home values, which could have a positive impact on the entire real estate sector as well as the tax base. Can you talk about um, steamboats being in the forefront of air service development and how that works for the entire community, the um, tourism facing business as well as the non-tourism facing businesses. And then dealing with the, you know, is when is, too much air service, too much, or and, and when is growth too much? Because you, you've had to uh, deal with those challenges in STEMA because you've been so successful. So can you, can you tell our audience a little bit about that? Sure. Um, wow, where do I start? Uh, you know, I'll start at the end of your, your questions, which is there needs to be a balance, right? We want to make sure we're successful. We don't flood the market with too many seats that we're not successful at making sure we can sustain and uh, effectively you know, create a successful environment for airlines to operate in. So there's a, a fine balance uh, and we're constantly trying to make sure we, we have that. Um, and I would say there's too, there's, there is such a thing as too many seats um, uh, and we're very conscious of that. So we wanna have the right mix of uh, airline partners with destinations and the amount of seats coming in and out of the, the airport. Um, long before I got here, I think it was around the time you were here in 1986, uh, 
a friend of ours in the industry, Mr. Kent Myers, um, uh, just an incredible guy, really kind of came up with the concept of a minimum revenue guarantee, an MRG. And the idea was back in the mid 80s, airlines, you know, where there was more of them, they were competing. Um, uh, more so, I would say, in the, in the second and third quarters of the year, um, uh, in the summer, right? And, and then you have the first quarter, which is really January, February, and March. Not really a time when airlines are experiencing high demand other than business travel, but even back then in the mid-80s, that was probably the least profitable quarter for the airline. Well, Kent and the leaders here at the resort and the community went to the airlines and said, how about if we guarantee you um, that you'll make a profit um, if you allocate your idle aircraft uh, to fly into our mountain destination? And hence was born the minimum revenue guarantee and the flight program for Steamboat, which then other mountain destinations uh, followed uh, after that. So it started back in 86, it continues on today. As I said, um, you know, we're fortunate to have really all the major uh, airline partners as a part of our air program, uh, which includes United and American and um, Alaska Airlines. Uh, new to us uh, a couple years ago was JetBlue. Uh, JetBlue is now flying in uh, from uh, several destinations, including Boston, uh, Fort Lauderdale, and JFK. Uh, so we're up to 15 nonstop markets with uh, six airline partners. And not only did JetBlue come in a couple of years ago, but Southwest Airlines, the brand that you talked about with the assets of the power of that brand, um, uh, uh, decided to, to have their inaugural service to the first mountain destination they've ever flown to on a winter seasonal basis. And their first flight into the Hayden Airport was December 18th of this year, uh, of 2020. And I still shake my head to say, what an incredible job our team did and to, to convince and work with and partner with Southwest Airlines to, to start their inaugural service during a pandemic. Um, and we've been talking to them for years, um, just in terms of uh, our brand here, the destination, the opportunity. Um, and they were looking at uh, how they could grow that first quarter of their business. Um, so they had been looking um, to expand their business and their brand, as you said, Warren, is it is so strong. And and walking through their headquarters down in Dallas at Love Field, you can feel the, the, the power of that brand. Um, and what was flattering to us is how much they felt their brand aligned with the Steamboat brand. It's all about families, all about friendliness, all about passion and fun. Um, so when we really kind of uh, you know, overlapped our brands, it was a natural partnership uh, that we formed and uh, they started flying. They're continuing to fly in today. Um, uh, they've, they've been very pleased and, and uh, with their service, so much so that they announced that they're gonna continue serving the Hayden Airport even after we close the resort on April 11th. They're gonna continue to serve this community and this Northwest Colorado through the shoulder season and through the summer. So. Um, they haven't looked out to next winter yet, but um, it started off incredibly well. We're very excited that Southwest is uh, chosen and partnered with us to fly into the airport. Um, and uh, it's, it's been uh, just, you know, really beneficial to this entire community. As we call it, I mean, it's literally a game changer to have Southwest Airlines uh, be the sixth airline to, to fly into our airport. Uh, and now going into this summer, we're going to have not only United flying, uh, but we're also going to have Southwest. So our, our community and the guests that come here are going to have a choice when it comes to, you know, air carriers and making connections and, and connecting uh, to the rest of the world, uh, hopefully here in the not so distant future. Lastly, I'll go back to one of your other questions was locate, we call it location neutral businesses or individuals. 
of folks that you know can work remotely even before the pandemic. Uh, they would be able to work, you know, from their home in Steamboat, um, have a really good uh, fiber connection, and uh, basically be able to travel to any destination they needed to if they needed to. So we've always been focused on these location neutral businesses and individuals. Again, before the pandemic and, and air service is a key component to that. So that they can come here and buy a home and contribute to this community and live and work and play here in the Yampa Valley. And as you can imagine, Warren, that has only exploded uh, since the pandemic and with our connection to air service and with you know, the internet um, uh, availability in terms of high speed and connectivity, um, that it's all kind of coming together with air service and the destination and the community. And, um, uh, and so we're seeing, you know, that, that growth in terms of the real estate market and, and people's desire to live uh, not only in our destination, but any, any mountain destination. But um, it, it just exploded last year and I, I get the sense it's we're going to see very similar um, uh, second homeowner usage and then even location neutral people moving to Steamboat uh, to be here full time. Fantastic. So uh, let's let's continue. We're almost done here. A mountain resort destination brand is the memory created by the sum of every experience a person has with the resort destination. This includes elements directly tied to visitation and ones that are not like hospitals, mountain colleges, real estate, as well as many others. The effort a mountain resort makes in stewarding the destination brand lessens the burden of other employers making the community an attractive place to live and work, attracting talent to compete in the global economy. And I think we've kind of touched on this, but can you discuss how Steamboat approaches the relationship between the visitor and non-visitor facing portions of the community um, and, and maybe a little bit more on just think about it as, as it relates to infrastructure, because we, we talked about the, the uh, destination or location neutral folks, but what about infrastructure and, and how that's been impacted and how you, you, you see that? A couple things. One is you need to understand I and my leadership team and our employees, we live here. We live in the Ampa Valley, right? So we're part of the fabric, the citizens, the community. Yeah, and we work for the resort, but we want this place to continue to, to be, you know, where we're gonna raise our families and, and hopefully stay here a long, long time. Uh, and if not, we'll get the Ampa Valley curse and be forced to come back here. But so we're very interested in the success, not only as the resort, but as a community and the challenges we face, whether it's environmental, whether it's transportation, um, whether it's parking, all the things that you experience in other mountain destinations and mountain communities are, are here. It's daycare and childcare, and of course it's affordable housing. These are all things that impact our entire community. So we are engaged, We're, we look at ourselves as the resort, as we need to be at the table in a part of the discussion, not only a part of the discussion, but a part of the solution. Um, so we want uh, to get involved with nonprofit boards and with the city council meetings and with planning commission and these various aspects that are, uh, again, a part of our community. And we encourage our staff, um, leadership, management, and on down to get involved and for you know, the United Way day of, you know, day of funding and, and volunteer, we, we pay our people to go volunteer and get involved in this community and we do cleanups and I go back to, you know, during the pandemic, um, our, our poor kids in high school, you know, for them to be, you know, uh, left out of that last few months of their high school and graduation and prom. So we got together as the community and we said, not only are we going to help the, the Steamboat Springs High School, but we invited the five high schools around uh, the valley and in, in Moffat County and in Route County. And we said, we're going to put on an event in our big parking lot, which is 
we did a drive through graduation and we had guest speakers and the kids decorated their cars and we got the police department and the fire department to lead the parade from our parking lot through the community and everybody came out and got on the side streets and you know had their cowbells you know for ski racing and for agriculture uh you know and, and it was a really a special event so and we didn't need to do that but that is something that that we felt you know whether you're a skier or a season pass holder that's stuff we have to do for for our visitors and our non-visitors alike so we take great pride in, in being a part of this community and um we always want to do the right thing rather than just you know uh, being a resort and uh, not being a part of uh, what makes us so special. You you truly are being the brand steward of the of the community and the entire Yampa Valley. So congratulations to you on that. That's going to wrap up um, our talk. We're going to be uh, available for questions. If you're looking for more about uh, the whole brand project, we have. Uh, a website that will give you some really interesting information on how brands perform. Um, gr a great uh, case study on on Southwest Airlines or Uber or Airbnb. Um, go to wholebrandproject.com. If you want to learn more about our travel and tourism practice, please email me at wilkinson at barclayus.com. I want to thank uh, Rob and the, and the folks at Mountain Travel Symposium for letting us join you all today. Um, it's been a, a great conversation, Rob, great insight. And right now I'd like to turn it over to Kat uh, so we can answer some questions. Well, that was wonderful. We really appreciate all of the, the information that, that you both just shared with our audience. And we do have quite a few questions. So uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. We may not get to all of them, um, but I've, um, I've selected a few that I think will be the most beneficial. So Warren and Rob, do you agree that a whole brand is dependent on people seeing a destination as an asset versus a commodity? And whoever wants to take a stab at that first can, uh, can go ahead. Well, I, I guess I'll jump in here. I would suggest that uh, mountain resort destinations in particular are very different and they are different by the sum of all of those experiences that you, you garner when you visit them. So uh, I don't think you can think of them as a commodity because they are so different and, they are, and they're different almost every time you visit them, depending on what you interact with, the people you interact with, the things that you do in those resorts and how the destination behaves as a whole brand or as a fractured brand. So I, I don't think, you know, I think there may have been some commoditizing of the lift ticket, but the experience and the destination experience is very different at each of the resorts. Rob, I'd love to hear what you have to say. I, I, I'd agree less about a commodity. Um, you know, we used to talk about ourselves as uphill transportation related to just the lift ticket. We're so much more than that now and even beyond the resort. And I go back to your example of a network brand. I would look at a mountain destination as more of a network. Sure, we have our assets, our chairlifts, our ski school, our restaurants, but it's only a portion of the overall network brand, the whole brand experience when you come to a mountain destination. So we look at it as a, not a commodity and, and not an asset brand, but a, but a network brand. Great. And so moving on to our next question, um, you talked a lot about how, you know, employees are an extension of a brand and um, Rob, how has your management approach changed to keep staff motivated and engaged throughout this season? And are any of the tactics that you employed unique to Steamboat or, you know, did they come, come down from um, Altera and, you know, corporate? Um, fortunately, we're a part of Altera Mountain Company, and we talk about, you know, we're one company, but we also say we're one company of many unique brands, uh, and that's really um, kind of at the heart of who we are. So 
I, I talked to my counterparts, but we had nothing come down um, uh, from above or from the corporate structure. I go back to when we started and developed our playbook. Uh, we called it the winter playbook, which really kind of put out how we were gonna operate uh, in, during the pandemic. We of course talked and worked with Altera Mountain Company and all the resorts so we could take all the best ideas and that's a part of being a part of a larger company. We also worked with Colorado Ski Country. We worked with the state of Colorado to really create our playbook that took into account all these great ideas. But during the pandemic, in terms of the employees, we as the resort uh, and, and the leadership team here, we said communication is gonna be paramount to our success. So on the guest side, we developed what we called the trail forward which was emails, website, how we were gonna operate and, and those things would be changing. So we really wanted to put the trail forward out there on how we're gonna operate. And then internally, we said, we're gonna communicate with our staff and be transparent and share with them like we never have before. So I sent out through this entire winter season at least one email a week. Uh, just this afternoon, I'm hosting my eighth or ninth and final town hall of the season. It's a very similar, uh, uh, you know, Zoom meeting that we're hosting here now, where I talk about all the things that are happening, uh, you know, currently with the resort, what's ahead, and then I do Q and A, and they're really good questions, and we have very engaged folks that are a part of our community that want to see. Uh, our resort be successful, have our community be successful. So I would say it's communication. Uh, and it's been an effort because again, I've sent out at least one email a week to the entire staff about what's happening. Uh, and I, I think it's proved to be very effective uh, to keeping our staff engaged and aware and informed of what's going on uh, in, in this crazy and chaotic world that we live in right now. Well, I, I'm sure that your employees really appreciate all of that communication and transparency. So it's been very important through this. So if an individual is working with a fractured brand, you know, we talked about all of all of the various aspects, be it air partners, you know, sustainability, focusing on employees, focusing on the community heritage. If an individual is working with a, a very fractured brand, where do you suggest is the best place to start, right? Because you can't necessarily implement everything at once. And so what would your, be your recommendation for, you know, the most important um, area to focus on first? And, and I'd love to hear both Rob and, and Warren's uh, feedback on that. I'll take a stab at it and then we'll pass it on for some real world. But I would, um, I would lean to uh, internal communication, win inside to win outside. Uh, you got to get your employees, uh, your most important asset uh, on board, of, you know, so they understand what you're trying to accomplish, what the brand stands for so that they, you create a, a, what we like to call a brand culture. So they are the, they go out and, and um, tell the story in a very positive way of, of what, what your company and what your brand stands for. And if you can get your employees to, to um, all um, think, think um, in the right way about how, what you're trying to accomplish as, a, as an organization and they believe in, in the purpose of that of that business, then I think you're gonna have a lot more success going down the entire across the spectrum, and and um, and becoming a whole brand. But Rob, I'd I'd love to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I think you're exactly correct. It starts internally. You know, it starts with you know clearly articulating, as you said, um, to your employees, because you know that's the real test, right? If you can get your employees to understand where you're trying to go. If you paint that vision, um, you're gonna be able to, to articulate it to them and then go outside to those fractured components. And it's not easy. I mean, that is a schlog. It's, a, it's tough sledding to, to create, you know, a unified, 
uh, a connected, a whole brand rather than a fractured brand. But I, again, I go back to the word vision. Um, and I also, before I go there, I talked about the brand pillars. You know, we, we said, these are our brand pillars. And it's tough to argue those when we go out and say, hey, we're just trying to, to create this whole brand, this, this you know, this destination um, uh, brand, uh, because it's us against the rest of the world. So we need to be aligned. So we talk about our brand pillars, but we also go out there and talk about our vision. Our vision as a resort carries on through this community. And our vision is we want to be, we will be the friendliest and most welcoming mountain destination in the world. It's a pretty simple vision, but that's what we as Steamboat Ski and Resort Corporation, that is our vision, to be the friendliest, most welcoming mountain destination. It doesn't say resort, it doesn't say ski area, mountain destination in the world. So we're behind that. We put all of our, you know, millions of marketing and advertising and employees, thousands of those behind this vision. And that's where we're going. And you need to, to articulate that into the community and into those fractured uh, components uh, to get them on board. Um, and it's not easy. And we're still, you know, working at it as we speak. And it's a never ending effort. I mean, right. this, is, this is not something that you do once and say, okay, I, I handled that piece and let's go on to the next. It's a continuum. But as you, as you approach this and you, and you are um, thoughtful in, and purposeful in your interactions with your, your employees, they will believe. And when they believe, they become even more valuable assets and they are, it can be so impactful to the brand. And then you can start looking at your, all the other pieces uh, or, or, areas of the whole brand spectrum to, to execute against. Well, thank you both for that thought, those thoughtful answers. And um, we are just at time. So I want to be respectful of um, everyone's day and, and um, wrap up. But thank you so much for Warren, uh, Warren and Rob for being here uh, with us. We really appreciate your time and this valuable information. Like I mentioned earlier, the uh, webinar recording will be sent out to everyone who is registered. So look for that in your inbox. And um, we will be back on Thursday at 12 Eastern with a webinar from Tourism Switzerland. So we hope you'll be able to join us again. And thank you so much to Barkley for bringing this lovely content to Mountain Travel Symposium. Thanks, Thanks again, Kat. Thanks, Rob. Have a great day, everybody.